Hey there everyone and I thank you guys so much for tuning in to yet another wild orchid adventure with me, Maria Young. Okay, so many of you guys have wondered exactly how do I water and fertilize my orchids, especially since I keep my orchids right outdoors. And a main deciding factor of how often you will need to water your orchids, of course, is exactly what type of medium they are in and what type of growing conditions and habitat they have. And two of the deciding factors of how often you will need to water your orchids, of course, is the fact of what type of medium they are in and also the type of conditions and growing habitat that they are growing in. So with this in mind, let's go ahead and talk about the common medium that we grow our orchids in. And a common form of medium that you will find readily available in any garden center is of course your bark medium. Now you will find that there is a wide variety of different bark material available. And sometimes you can even find packages that already include perlite and also coal right in the medium. Now the bark material is commonly used for orchids that need to have a little bit of dry time in between. So of course excellent for your dendrobiums and your cattleyas and also an assortment of other types of orchids. Another form of medium, of course, is your sphagnum moss, which a lot of us growers use, especially in the case where we have orchids that really need to get a lot of watering and have to retain a lot of moisture. And that's gonna be your oncidium varieties and also your stanhopias and those types of orchids. And here we have, folks, another type of medium that some orchid growers like to use. You are seeing coal, you are seeing lava rock, and you are seeing your basic average rock. Now these will work as well, even as unusual as it sounds. You will be surprised what your orchids can grow in, and sometimes what they naturally grow in. And here's yet another way of growing your orchids where some orchid growers will actually mount their orchids on some form of bark material or they will actually literally attach their orchids right onto the tree itself. And here folks, you see some of my orchids that are actually bare rooted and growing right in the air as they would grow in nature. So with these types of orchids right here, folks, because this does not have any type of medium, and of course they're aerial roots just growing in the air, you have to note that these are gonna have to be watered far more often than the rest of your orchids. And if you are able to water these orchids frequently, you will see that all of these root tips indicate that they are very, very healthy and growing as normal as they would be in nature. Okay folks, so since we've talked about exactly the different types of mediums you can use and also the different growing conditions that you can grow your orchids in, let's go ahead and talk about what is the deciding factor of what determines exactly how often or how not so often you are to water your orchids. Okay, so depending on how you are growing your orchids and what conditions they are in is going to determine exactly how often you have to water them. So please note, it is a determining factor of where you are growing your orchids in that is going to decide exactly what the requirements for your orchids are. So say for instance, you are growing your orchids indoors. Well, you have a higher probability that you are not gonna have to water as often as if they were kept outdoors. Of course, they are more susceptible to a lot of outside influence, such as the weather, the sun, the air circulation, and the wind and the breeze and also the humidity level. So indoors folks, you're not gonna have to water as often as you would outdoors. And of course, we also talked about the different variations of growing medium or lack thereof, which of course is gonna affect exactly how often you need to water your orchids as well. If you have elected to use the bark medium, it is important to note that this type of medium right here does not retain a whole lot of moisture and it will dry out a whole lot faster than your sphagnum moss. 
And if you're growing your orchids in sphagnum moss, it is important to note that this will retain moisture a whole lot longer than any other type of medium. And it is very important that you do not overwater because this can cause your orchid all sorts of different types of rotting. Now it is important to note that with your rock and coal medium, this is not going to hold moisture. So therefore you're going to be watering your orchids very frequently. And of course it should already be noted that if you are growing your orchids bare rooted or mounted into the tree, that of course this is going to have to be watered frequently because there is no medium and they are susceptible to a whole lot of air circulation. Okay, so since we've already talked about all of the factors of what should be considered when watering your orchids, I'm going to go ahead and show you exactly how I water mine. Okay, so the first thing that I will do is I will go over my orchids and I will determine whether or not they need to be watered. And as of right now, they do need to be watered. I haven't watered my orchids, I would say in about four days because we had received a whole lot of rain. So indeed, they are in need of watering. But I will have to say that there are some orchids that are in sphagnum moss, such as my oncidiums, and they have actually received a lot of water and retained a lot of it. So they are still moist and I don't want to rewater them again and then of course oversaturate them. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to remove those orchids that are not in need of watering. And lucky for me folks, I don't have that many orchids that are in pure sphagnum moss. So this is going to be a simple task for me to do. Okay, so now that I've removed all of my orchids in sphagnum moss, now I'm going to go ahead and check out the ones in the bark medium. And lucky for me, I have transitioned most of my orchids into these clear containers where you can really see inside and see if anything is going on in here and also determine whether or not this is dry or still has moisture inside. And as you can see here, folks, it looks pretty much dry. And I'm going to also go ahead and check into the medium with my fingers. And yep, just as I assume, folks, this is in need of watering. Like, give me some drink, quick, fast, in a hurry. Oh my. Okay, folks, and this is my handy dandy watering hose and also nozzle that I use. And I love so much, by the way, because this has different options of what you can use. And I oftentimes use the shower option when I need to really hydrate my orchids and give them a lot of watering. And of course, I have the mist option as well. And I will do that in between my heavy waterings and really just moisten the foliage area. Because as you guys know, orchids are also similar to the Tillandsias in which they can receive their nutrients and also watering through their foliage system as well. Okay folks and here we are. I have my hose in shower mode and we're all set and ready to go. So all I'm gonna do is begin to spray each one of these down giving them good good watering. Ah, they feel so relieved. Ah, I needed that. Yes. It's raining, it's raining water, it's raining water. Just taking my time, folks, making sure that they are getting good, good watering here. And they are absolutely loving it. And folks, again, I can't tell you how much I love these clear containers because you can literally see the water and make sure that the whole entire medium is getting watered right through the clear container. So definitely just awesome to have these. And just making sure that each and every one of these are getting fabulous watering. And they love it. Oh yeah. And here we are from the other side as well. We are going to get all of these air plants, these air orchids and aerial roots all watered up and my maxillaria ah, ah, they love it love it love it love it just making sure all of my orchids are getting watered it's raining in my orchid paradise right now and they are in much need of this watering 
So indeed, they are loving it. Loving it, and as you guys can see, I'm having so much fun. And I just love it. I love it because it reminds me of it just raining in the jungles. And yeah, it feels like it's raining to them as well. And it's reminding them of home. <sighs> Paradise! <sighs> and I just go throughout my entire garden. And I just make sure all of them get this very nourishing water treatment that they need. So as you can see, it's pretty simple, especially the way that I have my garden situated to really get these orchids watered down. And they just love me for it. They do, guys. Okay, so now that I've gotten all of the watering out the way, I did tell you about how I also like to miss them like every other day, every other day that I'm not watering them. And this is what I was talking about. I have this on mist option now. And look at here, look at that nice, pleasant mist. I mean, I lightly just go ahead and mist my orchids down, let the aerial roots get some replenishment as well, but also let the foliage system also receive some of that watering. So definitely this provides kind of a similar atmosphere as in the rainforest and also in the jungle, and it creates a nice mist and humidity for my orchids as well. Okay, so now that I'm all done having a blast watering my orchids, we are going to get to talking about how I fertilize my orchids, and I normally do this right after I water them. Now, the type of fertilizer that I use is not pre-mixed, so you have to actually add either a teaspoon or a tablespoon of the fertilizer into a gallon of water, and then, of course, find a way that you want to fertilize them, and I use mine in this spray bottle, and then I go ahead and spray all of my orchids down with them. Okay, and this is what the fertilizer looks like inside of the bag. And it also comes with this scoop right here that has its actual measurement of either a tablespoon or a teaspoon. Okay, folks, and depending on whether or not you're going to use a tablespoon or the teaspoon to each gallon will determine exactly how potent your fertilizer is. Now, of course, if you're going to use a tablespoon, it's going to be a whole lot stronger. And if you're going to use a teaspoon, it's going to be a lot weaker. So if you use the stronger fertilizer, you can actually fertilize perhaps maybe once or twice a week. And if you use the weaker dosage, you can actually fertilize at each watering. So it just depends on what you want to do and how you want to fertilize your orchids. Okay, folks, and here we are. We have our mixture already in our spray bottle. So what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to make sure that each one of these orchids are getting their fertilizer. And again, I just watered these orchids. So what's going to happen, because the medium is already wet, it's going to allow the actual fertilizer to just be more evenly distributed throughout the medium. It's going to help it absorb into the medium. So definitely that is why I go ahead and spray down or water down my orchids first. And of course, as you can see here, folks, it's taking me a little bit more time for each orchid to make sure that each one gets good amount of fertilizer, but I can guarantee you folks, it is worth it. It is worth it, especially when you see the health, the condition of your orchids just growing rambunctious, and of course the blossom for sure is a great plus to why you want to keep your orchids healthy. And of course folks, we are doing the exact same thing to all of our orchids that are bare-rooted with their roots just dangling in the air. We're also making sure that all of the roots are getting well fertilized also. And we also want to make sure that all of our tree-bound orchids are also getting a good amount of fertilizer as well. Okay folks, and that is the way that I water and I fertilize my orchid garden. I thank you guys so much for tuning in to yet another orchid adventure with me, Maria Young. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I hope perhaps even you may have learned something from this video. So if you guys like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs way up.
And of course, if you have not yet subscribed, please be sure to do so. That is a great way to stay updated with each and every one of my adventures. And of course, if you guys want to connect with me also on Facebook, please be sure to do so. And you can contact me on Facebook at My Orchid Adventures. And also, folks, if you guys want to contact me via snail mail, you can do that as well at the P. O boss address right here. Again, I thank you guys so much for tuning in to yet another wild orchid adventure with me, Maria Young. Please stay tuned for more.